this week on Faith Lift. Are you hearing me say this? Come on, lift up your Bible. Say there's a scripture in this. Say there's a promise that covers my problem. Now the word turn to here in the Greek text simply means it will eventuate. Something will be disembarked in my life. An event is about to take place that will bless me and deliver me. But it's in line with my expectation. Now, the word apokaradokia is a combination of three words. Apo simply means away or from. Away or what? From. The word kara means head. It means head. And the word dokia literally means stretching. So when you put these words together, it means to stretch the head away. Or to stretch the head from. Right? To what? Stretch. Now do, do me a favor. Stretch your head. Stretch your head. Stretch your head. I didn't say stretch your belly. Stretch your head. <laughs> right? But the word dokia also means thinking. So when you combine these words together, it means to have forward thinking. Not thinking backwards, but forward thinking. Now, I want you to write a few things down today. So write this down. The word apokaratokia has a threefold meaning. And I want you to listen to me very carefully here. It has a threefold meaning. Number one, it means to stretch your head looking for something. Paul says, I may be in jail. Hmm? They, they may have thrown away the keys, but I've got my head stretched out looking for my deliverance. Looking for my breakthrough. Looking for my freedom. Amen. Number two. The word apokaradokia was a term that was used in the olden days to horse racing. Have you ever seen horse racing? Now, what that word meant was the blinders that the horses wore. Have you ever seen horse racing on television? And the horse has got a blinder on, right? Why do you think the horse has blinders on? This is not a fashion show. He was not trying to look good. The reason why the horse has blinders on so that he will not be distracted what's going on on the left and what's going on on the right, that the only thing he can see is ahead of him and the winning post. What Paul was saying, I may be in jail, but I've got my blinders on. I can't see the wall on the left, and I can't see the wall on the right. I can only, and I've got my head stretched out. I can only see the winning post. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've got my blinders on. I'm not distracted. Number three. Hmm. The word apokaradokia, write this down please. This is where I want to get you today. Literally means, write this down, abstraction and absorption. Abstraction, say abstraction, and what? Absorption. Now, what does that mean? What does abstraction and absorption mean? It means to abstract yourself or to remove yourself from anything negative that will engage your mind towards failure and absorb yourself in the thing desired. Amen. amen. Say amen. What does that mean? 
to absorb. Everybody shout, absorb. absorb. Now, have you ever seen a material or something that has the power to absorb? Have you, how many of you have ever taken a bath? Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Amen, a shower. Now, a sponge, right? A sponge. What does a sponge do? It absorbs water. Am I correct? If you put it in water, it will absorb water. If you put it in blood, it will absorb blood. If you put it in blue ink, it will absorb blue ink. Now, it may go in light, but when it gets in the liquid, it absorbs all the water and it comes out heavy. Am I right? Right? It goes in the water and then absorbs something and it becomes heavy. If you were to press it, if it absorbed water, water will come out. If it absorbed blood, if you press it, blood will ooze out. If it's blue ink, blue ink will ooze out. What's Paul saying? I am obstructing myself. My mind, my attention, my thoughts on anything negative. That means I'm not thinking about death. I'm not thinking about being grounded here forever. And I'm absorbing myself in the thing I desire. To absorb, you have to absorb liquid or water. The Bible talks to you about the water of the word. The washing of the water by the word. What Paul is saying is that I've absorbed myself in the word. Say amen, somebody. And now I am heavy. Heavy when you press me, guess what will come out? The water of the words. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Put, put your hand in your belly and say, I have absorbed the water of the word. Now look at your neighbor and your neighbor. Abstract yourself from anything negative that will engage your mind towards failure. Put on your blinders, stretch your head, and absorb the water of God's promises. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. How many of you here this morning have got your blinders on this morning? How many of you here this morning, bless God, your head stretched out? Even though everything around you may tell you, you're not going to make it. But we're not looking to what the world says, we're looking to what the word says. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How do you do that? By faith. Say by faith. by faith. Now, say this after me. Say we walk by faith. I can't hear you. Say we walk by faith and not by sight. Is that what Paul says? Right? We walk by faith and not by sight. Now, the just shall live by faith. Put, now put your hand on your, chest, on your chest. Say, I am the just. I live by faith. And I walk by faith. Now watch this. I'm going to close with this. And then we're going to pray. Are you ready? All right. He says, the just shall live by faith. Now let's quote that verse together. We walk. Finish it. We walk by and not by sight. All right. Go with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Do you have it? You know, the Apostle Paul was an amazing man. Even Peter said, some of the things which he says are hard to be understood. But nonetheless, it is scripture. All right? He just throw you raw meat and bones. Now you go figure it out by yourself. Right? Now look what he says here. Do you have... 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. Do you have it? All right, look at verse 18. Let's read it out loud together. While we look not at the things which are seen. Stop right there. By the word seen, write the word visible. While we look not at things which are visible, but at the things which are not seen. All right? 
By the word not seen, write the word invisible. So, now let's look at this scripture here. Paul says, don't look at things which are visible, but rather, what? Look at things which are invisible. All right, question. How do I do that? By faith, all right. How? You see, sometimes we become so flippant, but we don't realize what we're saying. We say, by faith, how? Tell me how. Show me how. All right? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't look at things which are visible, but look at things which are invisible. How do you do that? No, don't say by faith. You're right, but that doesn't define it. Now look at me. Can you see me today? Can you see me? Right? Can you see me? What color is my shirt? White. What color is my pants? Black jeans. What color is my teeth? Don't say yellow. <laughs> what color is my teeth? What, what color is my skin? Ah, you don't know. I went to the Nigerian embassy. You know what the Nigerian? Do you know what the Nigerian embassy told me? What color I was? No, not even brown. When it comes to the supernatural, many in the church have the mental belief, but lack the physical evidence because they are deficient in spiritual power. Without the supernatural, the church is nothing but a social club. Without the supernatural, the believer and the church will be all talk and no action. For you to have the right reality, you'll need to deepen your relationship with the greatest person living in you right now, the Holy Spirit. Dr. Glenn's powerful book, The Holy Spirit, The Supernatural, and You, will answer these questions and more. Who is the Holy Spirit? How do I develop a partnership with Him? How do I have a supernatural ministry? How do I take my city for Christ? Can my Christianity be supernatural? You will also learn many more secrets to shift your Christian life to a new level of supernatural manifestation and power. Order this essential tool today the Holy Spirit, the supernatural, and you, and begin to experience the greater life that God has for you through an intimate relationship with the greatest person living in you right now, the Holy Spirit. Available in hardback or an immediate digital download. Read on your smartphone or tablet wherever you go. Call the number on your screen right now or go online to glenarechion.org. What color is my teeth? What, what color is my skin? Ah, you don't know. I went to the Nigerian embassy. You know what the Nigerian, do you know what the Nigerian embassy told me what color I was? No, not even brown. They said, sa. They said, sa, sa, sir, sa. You are olive. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm Olive. Can you see me, right? What instrument do you use to see visible things? Your eyes. So your eyes are the instrument that allows you to see visible things. All right? But now he tells you, don't do the things a normal way. But look at things which are invisible. How do I do that? He doesn't explain it. But how? So the fact that Paul says to do this, that means we can do it. Just because you don't know, doesn't mean that you can't. You can. You've got to know. All right? Are you ready? All right, do this. Let your finger up. 
Do this. What have you done? Licked your finger. No. What you've just done is eaten up some germs. Right? Am I right? I know you were, I know you were trying to test for your fufu. No, there's no fufu there. There's no pounded yam or no finger licking chicken. But what you have done is just you've just licked up germs. But can you see the germs? So to make, just because you can't see it, doesn't mean it's non-existent. It simply means it is invisible, not perceived by the power of your natural eyes. To make that which is invisible, which is the germs, to become visible, you will need an instrument. What is that instrument called? A microscope. It is an instrument that scope that which is micro and make it visible. If there was no roof, Huh? On this building. And you were to look up, what would you see? The sky. Wonderful. What else? Clouds. What else? Stars. What else? Huh? What? Pluto. You can see Pluto. Look at me. I submit to you what you see, what is there right now. Are you ready? Are highways. Highways. Why? Chartered courses. If they didn't have any chartered courses, how would a plane leave Abuja to go to Lagos or leave a plane to leave Abuja to go to Port Harcourt if there was no highways? But you can't see it. Hmm? But nonetheless, it's still there. Are you hearing me, saints? Your eyes will perceive some stars. But can you see Pluto? Hello? Can you see Jupiter? Can you see faraway stars? Huh. What would you need to be able to see the faraway stars? You will need a telescope. So a telescope makes that which is invisible becomes visible. Now, go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. Hebrews chapter 4. Look in your Bible here. Verse 12. If you have it, say amen. amen. Look at verse 12. All right, let's read together, please. Are you ready? I need you, to do, I need you to do this exercise with me. Look at verse 12. For, what? The Word of God. Stop right there. What is the subject here? The Word of God. Is the blood the subject? Come on, talk to me. Is the blood the subject? Is the name of Jesus subject? Is God the subject? What's the subject? Send, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. The subject is the word of God. For the word of God is quick or alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and of the spirit and of the joints and of the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let me ask you a question. What is quick and powerful? What is sharper than any two-edged sword? What peace is even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit? And the joints and the marrow. What is the discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart? All right, look at verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Whose sight? Not God. The Word. So what does that tell you? The Word has sight. Hmm? The word has a scope. Just like you have a microscope, just like you have a telescope, now you have a word scope. Amen. What kind of sight does the word have? Go to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 3 rather. Galatians chapter 3. Now, can you see me? 
Come on, talk to me. Can you see me? What color is this carpet? Purple. Now, did your eyes determine that? Or is it all, was it already purple? So your eyes picked up on something which is already revealed. It doesn't make anything happen. It only picks up upon what is already happening. But what kind of sight does the word have? Galatians chapter 3. Are you ready? Look at verse 8. Are you ready? Let's read verse 8 together. And the scripture. Stop right there. And give me another term for scripture. The word. And the scripture does what? Foreseeing. Hmm. So what kind of sight does the word have? It's got foresight. You and I have got hindsight, but the word has got fire, foresight. Are you listening? To make that which is invisible to become visible. The microscope, scope that which is micro and make it visible. The telescope, take that which is invisible and make it visible. The word, hallelujah, take that which is invisible to you right now, but it still is existent in the realm of the spirit. And when you look at your life uh, through the eyes of God's word, when you look at your circumstance, circumstance through the scope of God's word, it will force the invisible to become visible in your life. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Say amen. Now lift up your Bible or your holy iPads. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I tried preaching out of an iPad. Difficult. Thank you, Jesus. I honor those who can do it. Amen. <laughs> Come on, lift up your holy iPads. Come on, lift up your Bible. Come on, lift it. Oh, some of you, your Bibles and your phone. Lift up your phone. Hallelujah. Come on, say Amen. Amen. Say, I look. At life, through the scope of God's word. Say it again. I look at life. I look at my circumstance through the scope of the word. So what was Paul saying? Hey, I've got my blinders on. Hey, I've got my head stretched out. Hey, listen to me. I have absorbed myself in the word of the living God. Glory to God. And I've got to see through the word scope. Even though right now it looks like I am bound. It's just a matter of time before I go free. Come on, look at your neighbor say, it's just a matter of time. Say it again, it's just a matter of time. And I will be free. Listen, in 1991, I was minding my own business in the city of London, sleeping next to my wife. 7 a.m. in the morning, the door swung wide open. Now, you remember that 1991, we had the Gulf War. Hmm? <laughs> The door swung wide open and the British police came and grabbed me, right? And they put me in jail with my brother. Now, they didn't ask any questions. They said, we're putting you in jail. Now, look at me. On my ID card, they had abbreviated my name from Arekion to Areki. So they thought I was an Iraqi. Now, look at me. I do look. <laughs> huh? I do look like one of them, don't I? <laughs> if I was to ever go in the plane and go, blah, 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 they would go crazy. They thought I was an Iraqi. They put me and my brother, Bruno, <laughs> in jail. Are you listening? And then they took me into a place called Harmonsworth. Now Harmonsworth was a detention center where they deported people. I said, man, where will you deport me to? They said, wherever you come from, we will deport you to. I said, man, I live here. I reside here. They said, no, we don't care. We are deporting you. 
and they put me near Harmon's Worth. In Harmon's Worth, it was so close to Heathrow, every few seconds, you could hear the plane taking off. You could hear the plane. And the people, would, the police would come and take people in the, uh, in the detention center and grab them and put them on the plane. And the devil kept telling me, you could be next in line. You'll be on the next plane out of here. Right? Now, Bruno was going out of his mind. Then they moved us away from Harmersworth into a place called Hasler Prison. We were in prison. When we walked in there, my Lord, there was convicts of all kinds. And one guy said to my brother, if you're here, you're never coming out. And Bruno, his eyes was going left and right. I mean, it was all over the place. I said, man, don't listen to him. That's just Sanballat coming to bring us bad news. Okay? I would spend the night looking for the scriptures. Are you hearing me, saints? Come on, lift up your Bible. Say, there's a scripture in this. Say, there's a promise that covers my problem. I happened to be reading the book of Revelation. I discovered now unto him that loved us and made us kings and priests. I lifted up my Bible before God. So God, your word says I'm a king and I'm, and I am not a convict. A king does not stay in a prison. A king stays in his own palace. I don't have the right to be here. Are you listening to me? the best-selling book, The Power of Praying in Tongues. Call today and request yours at 502-523-4407. In The Power of Praying in Tongues book, you will learn 101 expository benefits of praying in tongues, how to develop partnership with the Holy Spirit, and more. This is not just a book based on emotionalism, but an exhaustive research into this marvelous aspect of prayer. It will begin a new chapter of hope and experience in your life as a believer. Praying in other tongues will be a door to major breakthroughs in your life. Call today, 502-523-4407, or go online at glenarechion.org. Available in hardback or an immediate digital download. Read on your smartphone or tablet wherever you go. Call the number on your screen right now or go online to glenarechion.org. Go ye into all the world is a mandate given to every believer. However, not everybody's called to go on the mission field. But you can still play your part in the Great Commission and partner with Glen Arechion Ministries. Today, considered to be one of Dr. Glenn's faithful, financial, and prayerful partners.